Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the export options inside of DaVinci Resolve 16 because I get bombarded with messages about the best export settings for this and that and I figured ah, to hell with it, I'll make a dedicated video. It won't take too long because luckily DaVinci Resolve takes care of all the heavy lifting. So let's jump in and go through the best export settings for, you know, if you want to upload to YouTube or export to say give to a client. Okay guys, so here in DaVinci Resolve, I've just got this project open, which is my latest video, how to grade log footage. So if you want to check that out, you know, check the link up above here. But we're not going to worry about this timeline. As you can see though, it is, you know, not a busy timeline, but not a small timeline. We're going to jump across to the deliver page is what we're going to be looking at today. So in the deliver page, we have all of these presets. And I'll tell you what, I use these presets all of the time. There's not been a single time where I feel like I need to go through the custom settings, but at least it's there if you do have some very specific needs. So right off the bat, if you are uploading to YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, use the YouTube 1080p default setting. And if you hit this drop down arrow here, you can change it to 720p or 2160, and then you can name it, browse the file location. So let's just chuck it on the desktop and save it and name it. And with that, you can go through and you can change a few settings. So as well as changing through the drop down here, you can also change the resolution here. So depending on whether or not NTSC, PAL, 1080p, 720, right up until like proper cinema 4K. You can also change the format between QuickTime, so .mov or .mp4. It's not really going to change too much regardless because this is for internet. You can also change what codec. For YouTube, Instagram, and all that sort of stuff, .h264 is perfectly fine. You will not really need to use any of the other types of compression. Moving on to the audio, you got a few different options here, but leaving it at default is gonna give you the best results. Same with the audio codec, just leave it on AAC and ignore the data burn-in. Now, you can choose to upload directly from YouTube. I prefer to just manually upload it because sometimes it sort of, I've had a few errors where it'll be rendering out the video and then it won't upload exactly at the same time. And anyway, I just leave that unchecked. And then once, like I said, default settings, that's all we've used here. Then you go to add render queue. And currently it's an error because it's saying that it's a 1080p. We're just gonna add it anyway. Uh, that error is because this is a 1080p timeline. It's a 4K export. And so here it is in our render queue and it doesn't start rendering until you hit start render. So what's good here is we can actually go through and add a few more things if we want to render out a few different copies. So moving on from YouTube, we have Vimeo. Now, you're going to find that it's going to be more or less the same. You know, it's using the same codec, using the same audio codec, the resolution and the format. And to be honest, I've exported these two and I can't personally tell the difference between them. I guess the difference is, is you can obviously upload directly to Vimeo from here. So that's something to look into as well. Now we're going to skip ProRes, H.265 and 264 for now and just have a look at the back end because this is more for exporting for other programs. So if you want to export to Final Cut Pro 7 or Pro 10 and you want this entire timeline readable, this is exactly where you would export it. And exact same if you want to do it for Avid or Premiere, this is where you would export that from. And again, you just click on it and you can just use the default settings, change the name and you can just add to render queue like so and that will render out an XML file that can be read by Premiere and it will load all your media, timeline and everything into Premiere. And again, we have Pro Tools as well. Now let's have a look at these three here because these three are the ones that I would use if you are exporting for a client. So you've gone out and you've shot a few videos. If they are not videos for social media and they are videos to be hosted on say a website or on their landing page or something like that, this is where I'd export. Generally, I like to use the ProRes Master. However, you will find that using H.264 and 265 Master is gonna give you very similar results. There are people out there that just like to get real picky with the, the file formats and everything like that. However, I've exported ProRes, H.264 and 265 Masters, and I find the quality very comparable between the three. The ProRes Master is the one that I like to use. I find that it's a good balance between file size and quality. I mean, again, you're gonna get very similar results if you use 264 and 265, and I always use the default settings. There has never been a need for me to go through and change specific settings down here. I find the default quite similar, and you can go through and obviously change resolution 
If you really need to change the codec, you can, but I find Apple Pros to be perfectly fine, and you can change your location here. IMF, you can ignore. This is generally for large, large projects, and you can see if you hit the drop down, it's got 20th Century Fox and Netflix. So if you go to Netflix, this is actually gonna give you the export settings as if you're exporting for a Netflix series, likewise for 20th Century Fox. So again, you could leave IMF, you're not gonna really need it. Summarize, if you're exporting for YouTube, just use the default YouTube settings, you're gonna get the best results. And then if you're exporting for a client, I would use the ProRes Master. It's gonna give you really great results with not huge file sizes, but if you want to, you can use 264, 265 as well. But these are the three for client work, especially for like wedding videos, and then for social media videos like that, use the YouTube ones. I know it's not super in depth, but I know there are a lot of people that get come to this page and get super, super flustered and hopefully this has sort of narrowed it down. Again, I just use the default settings and I've never had an issue, never had a single complaint. So hopefully that has been helpful there. So there you go, guys. Those are the sort of the export settings that I use and sort of how I export for different projects. Hopefully you found this interesting or helpful. And if you did, make sure you smash the thumbs up button. And hell, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more like this. But until the next one, see ya.